Hello friends, in today's documentary, we will talk about, the enigma of the biggest explosion in history, the strange Tunguska phenomenon. What was, meteorite, comet or an alien ship? In June 1908, a huge explosion shook Siberia. Lightning, meteorite, the explosion has had its effects in the United Kingdom and even in the United States. After years of research, we still do not know the origin of this mysterious cataclysm. And Russian scientists have just invalidated the most recent hypothesis that had been made about the Tunguska phenomenon. A ball of fire crossed the Siberian sky that night. Then, suddenly, above the Tunguska River, a terrible explosion takes place, accompanied by a rain of stones. The few witnesses who could describe what happened speak of an apocalyptic scene. The stones fell from the sky, the earth shook, the air became hot. On that night of June 30, 1908, the Tungus, a nomadic people living in this desert region of central Siberia, believed that the wrath of the god Ogdi had fallen on earth. The seismic wave was felt all over the planet. The dust from the explosion formed a cloud that rose to 20 kilometers high and over 80 million trees, covering an area of 2,000 square kilometers of taiga, are simply burned. At that time, the explosion was recorded by seismographs. The magnitude was estimated between 4.5 and 5 on the Richter scale. In terms of power, it was 185 times larger than the bomb that destroyed Hiroshima. However, there is no evidence that there were human deaths during this event, which was christened Tunguska. 20 years later, in 1927, a Soviet meteorologist specializing in meteorites, Leonid Kulik, launched the first expedition to this region of Siberia. The apocalyptic passage that the members of the expedition discover leads them to believe that the damage was done by one of the greatest meteorites. However, no trace of a crater. Kulik concludes that the meteorite exploded before it hit the ground. Three other expeditions, in 1928, 1930 and 1938, returned to the site of the catastrophe, but failed to find new elements. A hybrid meteorite? Since then, the craziest hypotheses have been circulating. Black hole, spherical lightning, antimatter explosion and even alien attack. The latter would have caused the meteorite to explode to save Earth. But other, more serious studies focus on the composition of this celestial body that would have come into contact with the Earth's atmosphere. In 1958, then in 1961, numerous metal and silicate particles were studied. The result, what would have hit Earth was a comet whose core was made up of frozen gas and dust. It was estimated to have a diameter of 60 meters and weighed 60,000 tons as most of its components probably dispersed into the atmosphere during the explosion. Only a rain of various materials eventually fell to Earth. In 1990, a new team took drops of resin from the trunks of conifers in the disaster area. Several microparticles were thus discovered, which led scientists to say in the end that it was a hybrid between an asteroid and a comet, because they found a mixture of rock and ice. However, the celestial body did not appear to have been so massive as to cause a crater at the time of the fall. For years, a team of Italian scientists from the University of Bologna tried to validate the hypothesis of the non-existent meteorite and crater. Among them, Luca Gasparini, who discovered that, in fact, Lake Kecko was not mentioned in the maps of Siberia dating back to the Tsarist era. His team left immediately to analyze the sediments on the shores of this lake. They concluded that it was at least a century old and that the dense, stony matter found on the bottom of the lake was, in fact, the remnant of the meteorite explosion. According to the final hypothesis of Luca Gasparini, exposed in an interview given in 2007 for National Geographic, in fact, two celestial bodies entered the atmosphere. One exploded about 8 kilometers above the Earth and the other fell to Earth, causing the crater in which Lake Kecko then formed. Spectacular growth of vegetation. Recently, however, Russian researchers from the Society for Geography of Siberia have questioned this hypothesis. They analyzed the sediments from the deepest part of the lake, at over 50 meters. In their view, 
The samples taken are 280 years old, which means that the lake is certainly older. Because it is clear that they could not extract sediments from the oldest layers of the lake bottom. The lake looks young, but not young enough to be the crater caused by Tunguska. The question of the nature of the object that entered the Earth's atmosphere more than a century ago remains unanswered. Some scientists believe that the absence of an impact crater is not compatible with the idea of an asteroid or meteorite falling. There are other mysteries about Tunguska. The vegetation near the epicenter has a spectacular growth, ten times faster than that observed in the rest of the region. Some experts believe that the dust released by the explosion acted as a super fertilizer. Post-disaster vegetation proves to be abnormally rich in arsenic, iodine, bromine, zinc and tellurium. Russian scientists have also reported genetic mutations observed in insects, but these are disputed results. What is the difference between a comet, an asteroid and a meteorite? The size varies between the asteroid and the meteorite. An asteroid can measure between a few meters and a few kilometers. The result of the solar system, it is a celestial body made up of rocks, ice and metals. A meteorite is metric in size. Its entry into the atmosphere causes intense light. Generally, it is a piece of asteroid or comet. Comets, in turn, are bodies resulting from the solar system. Unlike the asteroid and meteorite, the comet has a nucleus composed of frozen gas and dust. As it approaches the sun, a fine atmosphere forms around it, it is the comet's ridge and tail, sometimes observable from Earth. Other theories. An interesting theory was also issued by specialists from the Institute of Earth Physics at the Academy of Sciences of the former USSR who conducted a series of researches in the Krasnoyarsk region between 1974 and 1978. Soviet researchers hypothesized that snowflake, and according to this theory, responsible for the disaster caused by the Tunguska phenomenon would have been a comet-like body with a core made of ice crystals. The celestial body would have moved at supersonic speed, accompanied by an atmospheric shock wave, such a body, Soviet specialists claimed, could have caused visible marks on the ground, but no explosion took place. In the absence of solid evidence, the statements of specialists from the Institute of Earth Physics remained only at the hypothetical stage. It is not clear if it was a ship or another artificial body. But it is clear that it cannot be an ordinary comet, a meteorite or a protobion, at least since we represent these or other cosmic or terrestrial objects of non-artificial origin. The body, measuring between a few tens of meters and a kilometer, shone brightly in flight, left behind a smoky runway and possibly made a few maneuvers. As it approaches the southern swamp, the future epicenter, the body slowed down and eventually formed something like an electromagnetic clot around it or curved the characteristics of space-time into a local area around it. For this reason or another. But from the body or from the area around the body to the ground, at first tens, then hundreds of strong lightning bolts, whose intensity of blows increased, remained at the same level. Then disappeared in 2 to 15 minutes. Most likely, even before reaching the maximum of these shocks, two or three minutes after the first strong electrical failure. The body, as a result of an internal reaction, nuclear explosion, thermonuclear or other phenomenon with the formation of a sharp shock wave, formed a strong air wave that propagates from a point source, not more than 1 to 20 meters. It was only after the first wave that most of the trees were torn down and a weak array fell to the ground, but numerous explosions or other processes followed, causing air waves to knock down the remaining trees. At the time of the formation of the explosive waves, he made some already chaotic movements in the air, continuing to form lightning. As already mentioned, for about 15 minutes. Therefore, it can be assumed that the body did not collapse or collapsed completely as a result of these explosions. Some not-so-clear properties of this body allowed it to capture from the surface of the Earth, or an Earth-like planet, a series of large rocks and then drive them at high speed into the Earth. It is not yet clear where the stones, such as the strange stones of Yankovsky and Anfinogenov, came from. In October 1996, 
A chemical analysis of a stone sample by John Anfinijanov by Golubov showed that it was not a meteorite. But where it came from, the nearest deposit of such stones is 400 kilometers from this place. All that remains is to assume that something or someone managed to lift this stone, stones, and with enough speed to be able to plow about 70 meters into the ground by inertia. He threw them into the epicenter. The explanation seems absurd, but it would be illogical to ignore this inexplicable factor, as well as other, illogical, but still existing facts. In a way, the Tunguska body left behind the radioactive fall, as well as places with a modified speed, rhythm, of physical time, in total, three such places were discovered. In the area of the southern edge of the southern swamp, on the slope north of Mount Cascade and west of Churgham Waterfall. As a result of these or other influences, the epicentric area still retains the traces of a catastrophe, expressed, among other things, in mutations of plants, insects, in an increased psychophysical effect on humans, etc. It just so happened. What has actually happened is that so far we can only speculate. At least, hypotheses based on this picture of the phenomenon, you can think of at least half a dozen. For example, or for imagination, below is just one of them. Let's try to look at this mystery from a new angle and try to present a scenario of events that meets all the requirements. Unfortunately, science does not know a body of natural origin, able to approach all points and it is quite difficult to imagine a maneuvering body, but uncontrollable. The task is further complicated by the fact that we must not forget the electrical nature of the exploded body, its effect on the space-time field and many other obscure phenomena. Suppose it was, at 7 o'clock in the morning, local time, on June 3017 a large object, according to the description of a giant UFO, the so-called mothership, flew into the Earth's atmosphere. Judging by the terrible noise, a rare occurrence on quiet alien ships, this was an emergency descent. The time on the ship coincides with ours. So the Earthlings see what is really happening, the UFO is falling. At an altitude of 5 kilometers, the aliens return 90 degrees into space, did you eliminate the accident? Did you change your mind about the landing? Did you notice anything on Earth? didn't find a suitable landing place between the tiger and the swamps. And 180 degrees in time, that is. It changes the direction of the movement of time in the opposite direction. No law of physics forbids such a maneuver. Although it certainly contradicts all the rules of the movement of space in safety, if it exists only in the universe. The huge ship slowly, to the sound of roaring engines, turns over the tiger. Passing through the time barrier, like a plane breaking through the sound barrier, it creates an explosive wave around it. Its engines, which ran for long minutes as the UFO went through, zero time. According to Earthlings, released all their enormous energy in one moment. Dot dot dot. A monstrous explosion tore down trees, set fire to the tiger, electrified the surrounding air caused a complete electric shock in the waterfall, reversed the magnetization of rocks, the formation of radioactive isotopes in the soil, mutations in living organisms and a number of other consequences. Unpredictable. Dot dot. Well, our ship has already started to accelerate and after a thousand kilometers it has left the atmosphere. Now time on Earth and UFOs have gone in different directions and people first saw this object in the upper atmosphere, then lower and lower, then heard a distant explosion. All of this was like, a movie role at the end. That is, the luminous object, according to the general opinion of the eyewitnesses, also fell into the tiger. At the same time, a UFO, like any object flying in another time, must change its visible shape and color which, in fact, was noticed. The mysterious glow of the atmosphere before and after this day is also explained. Apparently, the particles of used matter have entered the upper layers of the atmosphere, or a kind of emergency release, do not forget, because the ship was in a state of emergency. And the particles of this substance, more precisely, the antimatter gas, moved by inertia a few days ago, while shining all the time, annihilating with rarefied air at altitudes over 100 kilometers. 
Perhaps the brightness of the atmosphere was caused by other reasons, for example, the explosion caused by the appearance of a large number of noctilucent clouds in any case. Long-term observations and calculations of the astronomer Romeco indicate such a possibility. No physical law forbids such a maneuver. Although it certainly contradicts all the rules of the movement of space in safe conditions, if it exists only in the universe. After 83 years, a similar scenario, i.e. a phenomenon in which an apparent cause appears later, the consequences it produced, in fact, were repeated in Sosovo, Ryazan region. On the night of April 12, 1991, they first saw several UFOs flying, then heard a loud explosion. Although the explosion could not be compared to the Tunguska explosion, it happened in a populated area, and, again, there were no casualties, and therefore drew special attention to it. The official commission quickly attributed the reason for detonating the bags of fertilizer that were next to each other. But the contents of these bags were scattered only by the explosion on the sides. I must say that the reliable reasons for what happened there have not yet been discovered. But let's go back to Tunguska. At the same time, a UFO, like any object flying in another time, must change its visible shape and color. Which, in fact, was noticed. The mysterious glow of the atmosphere before and after this day is also explained. Apparently, the particles of used matter have entered the upper layers of the atmosphere, or a kind of emergency release. Do not forget, because the ship was in a state of emergency and the particles of this substance, more precisely, the antimatter gas, possibly by inertia, moved a few days ago, while shining all the time, annihilating with rarefied air at altitudes over 100 kilometers. It also explains why such a glow was only west of Tunguska, as far as England. Because the ship was in a state of emergency and did not have enough energy to take off in any direction, like all, normal, UFOs. Pilots could reasonably decide to use the Earth's rotational speed to gain the first speed. Spatial. In fact, space rockets produced by Earthlings do the same. Almost all take off in the direction of the Earth's rotation. Our home planet, as it were, helps them gain the required speed faster. Thus saving about 10 to 20 percent of their fuel when rockets take off from west to east. But, according to the aliens, more precisely, the modern, our planet was spinning not from west to east, but quite the opposite. So the aliens turned their ship first south, where they saw her eyewitnesses, and then, after crossing the Yenisei, strictly west, here they have already gained altitude. In addition, the dawn has not yet come in these spindle schedules, so the farther west, the fewer eyewitnesses and the higher they rose above the Earth, the less light they left behind. Indeed, the White Knight's area looked like a strongly elongated wedge, with a wide end near Lake Baikal and a sharp one in the Atlantic. By the way, about the shape of this very bright night area. This shape is very similar to the elongated butterfly of the Tunguska dump. Is it a coincidence or a pattern? Maybe the two wings of the back of the Tunguska butterfly are the consequences of the predominant direction of emissions from the body. If you liked the documentary, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and leave a comment. Until next time, I wish you all the best.